73 degrees at six o'clock this morning. You can see the humidity out there and Mike says that's going to stick around because we have potential showers throughout the day. He's going to have that forecast for us in just a bit. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Time to rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, April 9th. April 9th. The eclipse was beautiful. You're probably tired of us talking about it. I mean, I think Mike is tired of us talking about it. No, he's like, no, yes. I'm hey, just still, it, I mean. It was, it was cool. It was very cool. I mean, just, you know, all that lead up to it. It's like the clouds. Yeah. So they, it's like, oh, yeah. Some but, people got to look. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of folks in, in, in the Hill Country got to look. But it was very cool when all of a sudden it, it started getting darker. And then it was like dark. Yes. Yeah, which is like whoa, the dark and then so. the silencing of like the birds, birds everything oh, stopped. So cool. All right. That's a fond memory now. Yes. And this morning we have to watch out for uh, not only a little miss on the roads, damp roads, but also some potentially stronger storms, too. So we've been watching the one storm well down to the uh, the southeast. Show you that in just a second. You can see like uh, like Sarah said, just see the humidity out there and the road may be a bit damp. You see a reflection off of uh, with the headlights there off 410 at uh, the airport. So down here to the uh, south and to the uh, southeast, that cell right there around Beeville, that's the one. And now it's up moving toward Goliad. It almost looks like it has settled ever so slightly. Uh, it had that little purple core to it, and that, I believe, did produce a little bit of hail. There was some picked up on radar earlier this morning. Nothing showing up on, on radar as of right now. This is working its way off to the northeast, sort of spreading a little bit. And I do, yeah, it does look like it's losing somewhat of its punch, but you are going to be getting some rain there around Yorktown, Quero as well. Now, a little bit closer in, we do have these few showers and nothing is really blowing up or blossoming up right now. But notice how there are a couple of yellow spots thrown on in there. So a couple of uh, stronger or I shouldn't say stronger, but uh, a little bit heavier downpours there. This is heading in towards Seguin, heading across 10 on the extreme east side of Bear County. We're going to have to watch these over the course of the next half an hour to an hour if they decide to blossom up in anything, which is what a couple of computer models are indicating as far as those wanting to kind of blow up into something, into some thunderstorms. Everybody's in the 70s right now, with one exception over there. We're averaging 15 degrees above normal, a ton of humidity, and that really came in overnight. The humidity surged back in here, and that's what's making the air atmosphere very volatile. That's why we have, and just to put it in perspective, a scale of one to five, this is a one over here to the west, two, and then three. So pretty good chance that these, now not only this morning, but even later on today, going to get some strong to potentially severe storms. New Braunfels, uh, even Seguin heading up better chance further up to the northeast and a two elsewhere. So we're definitely going to have to be on the lookout. Uh, just some of the measurements in the atmosphere, are just everything's a lot of red lines out there. So like I said, it is a very, very volatile situation today with the atmosphere. We're going to have some of these showers and a couple of storms this morning. Little lull in the action and we'll be up to 80 at noon and then we'll start to see a couple more late this afternoon. Then there's going to be another line that moves through late tonight. After that, great looking weather. Get it all sorted out for you in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, what's cooking, sir? All right, Mike, yeah, you can definitely uh, feel the humidity out there and see some of that moisture there. As we take a look here, you mentioned the east side of uh, the San Antonio, South Central Texas area, I-37 at the Alamo Dome. We have traffic moving pretty smooth, but uh, you see kind of there in the distance some of uh, the weather conditions that we are seeing out there. So that's going to be something we will continue to monitor. Let's get you updated on some current situations going on here. I-10 westbound at West Avenue. We have a report of a stalled vehicle. Now, interesting, TxDOT is also reporting a pedestrian uh, on the shoulder of the highway. So not sure if this pedestrian is maybe the driver of this vehicle here, but one way or the other, just make sure to uh, stay safe if you are heading this side of town. And also uh, just be careful when you do stall and end up on the shoulder and make sure to uh, call for assistance out there. And we'll get TxDOT Hero Trucks to come help you all out. Uh, taking a look here, we have a stalled vehicle, 35 northbound at Nogalitos. This is just uh, south of the downtown area, not causing too many any major delays at the moment. And that's basically all we're looking at right now. Again, kind of waiting on some of this maybe rain to develop in our area. But uh, good news, if you are headed outside right now for your 6 o'clock commute, uh, traffic for the most part is looking pretty good across the San Antonio area. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys.
Thank you, RJ. New this morning, a UTSA student has been arrested, accused of spraying, quote, anti-Israel graffiti on both a pillar and ground at the school's main campus on the northwest side Monday. In a social media post, the UTSA Police Department said someone reported the act after seeing the unnamed student near the McKinney Humanities Building. In a statement, UTSA's chief of police says the student will be charged with a state jail felony of graffiti to a church or school, along with a Class A misdemeanor of evading arrest. The UTSA student is also subject to university disciplinary action. Kirby police helped San Antonio police arrest a man who was accused of kidnapping a woman in San Antonio. So according to Kirby police, around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, a man broke into a woman's home and forced her into his car. Kirby police arrested the man on Borchers Drive near Loop 410. Investigators tell us the woman got a hold of the man's phone and was able to call a friend. Quick, quick thinking in that manner um, actually saved her life at this point. Um, her, her ability to kind of think ahead, even if it was not messaging 911 or calling 911, she was able to get information out to her friend, which our officer was standing, or the CSAP officer was standing by. The Kirby police chief also says the man and woman were in a previous relationship. So if you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, scan this QR code that's on your screen right now. It will take you to a full list of resources that can help you right now. Just head to KSAT.com. 606, in case you missed it last night, the newest KSAT investigates is up right now on KSAT.com and in the KSAT YouTube page. Past criminal charges, multiple bankruptcies, and accusations of unpaid loans were apparently not enough to disqualify someone from serving as chairman of the Medina County Republican Party. After KSAT investigates attempted to speak with Brian Conkey about his past, he informed party leadership he'd stepped down from the role. A former investor, one of Conkey's companies, told KSAT it wouldn't have been hard for the GOP to spot red flags. It doesn't appear that the background checks were done if you're going to put somebody in, in a leadership position. Now we've got the full story, including court records uncovered by KSAT investigates in multiple states right now on KSAT.com. Well, after 78 years of ministry, a San Antonio church has closed its doors. A spokesperson from Jefferson Community Church says they will no longer be able to serve their West Side community for the time being. The church, once known as Jefferson Methodist, first opened its doors in 1946. Jefferson disaffiliated from the UMC in 2019. Then the church fell behind on bills, including rent to the United Methodist Church Conference. They now work for the community they serve since their food pantry, weekly community dinner and community closet will also be closing. We had enough from our tithes that we could, you know, keep the doors open, but we didn't have enough that we could set aside to make that balloon payment. And also we didn't make enough so we could keep our insurance coverage. The church is now selling everything in hopes of being able to afford a new place. They'll have sales this weekend. You can read more about this on KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, the leader of the nation's largest bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, sounding the alarm that inflation could soar in the coming years. In his annual letter to shareholders, Jamie Dimon said there's been too much emphasis on short term and not enough focus on long term trends. However, not everyone's on board with the latest assessment. In 2022, Dimon predicted a hurricane would hit the U.S. economy and later admitted he was wrong. Meanwhile, even though inflation has fallen from a peak of more than 9%, it's still above the Fed's target of 2%. And here at home, people living in San Antonio can use the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program until April 15th to file their taxes for free. So you can get those services at 13 locations throughout San Antonio and Fredericksburg. Some of those locations offer refund anticipation loans, and they don't charge fees or interest. For more information, just head to ksat.com. 608, 73 degrees. Still to come, Nike, this is what we were talking about earlier, has unveiled its their new logo for Spurs rookie and basketball star Victor Wimbayama, and it's got social media buzzing. Oh, and us too here at KSAT. <laughs> A special day for San Antonio couples during the eclipse. After the break, we'll hear from the first couple who tied the knot at the Bear County Courthouse. 73 degrees at 609. It's muggy, guys, so it's a hairspray, hair pulled back kind of morning. Also, gonna have some chances of rainstorms in our area. Mike will have all that when we come back. Well,
Take a look at your screen. It was a special day for several couples at the Bear County Courthouse. We spoke with the first couple who got married at the courthouse during the eclipse, Isaac and Eva. They tell us this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. We've wanted to get married for almost like half a year or so. We've kind of talked about it, but like we didn't have a day and this day kind of gave us a purpose. To experience something so absurd and so powerful and beautiful is kind of like a perfect um, thing to experience on on this day. Judge Rosie Speedland Gonzalez convitiated Eva and Isaac's wedding along with almost a dozen others. Well, before yesterday's eclipse, many of us wondered how the animals would react when it got dark outside. So the San Antonio Zoo sent us this video. It's pretty cool. You can see the meerkats starting to huddle together before they ran into their burrows. Ah, it's dark. We gotta go inside. The zoo also sent video of the whooping cranes dancing just after totality. I mean, they had their, you know, their, their circle normally act like they no don't normally act like this. But workers at the zoo say it's possible their behavior is a coincidence. Maybe that's some kind of wit ritual they do. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But I mean, you could, we were talking about it and you may not have noticed this, but uh, literally right as we got to the peak of darkness here in San Antonio, the birds just Silence. stopped. It was yeah. cool. It's like everybody went home for the night and then immediately, like, they're what like, the heck? Oh, oh, they're like, that was a short sleep. It was a fun day yesterday. <laughs> 614 on your Tuesday morning. RJ, um, any incidents out there? Yeah, guys, things looking pretty good. Weirdest thing to me was I saw uh, like three hawks flying in a symmetrical triangle, and I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Nothing happened. What does it all mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, a little bit, maybe a few minutes before uh, eclipse time, but uh, yeah, definitely interesting uh, research there to see some of the animals. Cool video there from our San Antonio Zoo. All right, guys, things looking pretty good on the roads right now. If you are about to uh, get out and about uh, to, on your Tuesday morning, here 37 Jones Avenue traffic moving pretty good both directions there 37 Hackberry same situation there as well as we take a look at our citywide map and you see that uh, no major incidents no major delays right now a couple of smaller things to let you know about right now on northeast side loop 410 southbound lanes there at Ben Zingleman Road so all of our folks out there in the BAM sea area may run into this stalled vehicle but looks like we are still getting traffic through that area and we still have this uh, stalled vehicle being reported south of downtown this is at 35 northbound there at Nogalito Street right by the uh, Burbank High School area. So good news, we have cleared out that other stalled vehicle there that was at uh, West Avenue and I-10. And again, there were some concerns there because it was initially reported as a, a pedestrian on the highway or on the shoulder. So at least we see that uh, that has been cleared out by some of our folks out there at TxDOT. As we give you one more quick look at our TransGuide cameras, but things looking pretty good, guys. Might be a good time to head out right now. And the icing on top for yesterday's eclipse. And Mike, you can jump in here and probably you'll probably agree. A lot of people are saying even though the clouds didn't help, it was more of a sense of community, a sense of we versus me to experience this right. event. Yeah, and, and it was great to, out there at the Rock, and they had a bunch of kids out there and, and the NASA scientists and everything, and, and they were using that as just the little spark to get kids interested in science and all the STEM and, yeah. and exploring, and they were hearing from people. You know, we interviewed one of the scientists that helped put that lander on the moon a couple of months ago. Yeah. Wow. It's like this is, you know, and to see these people that are actually like real people and, and just like them when they were little too. So, yeah, we were with some uh, really smart folks yesterday. A lot of brain power yeah. in San Antonio yesterday. <laughs> Being out there kind of took that curve and made it go down. So, <laughs> anyway. My, never. No, it was, it was a lot of fun, yeah. And when it got so dark like that too, that was just, it was kind of eerie. It was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like, wow. And then it just. Bingo, somebody, you know, crank the lights back on. All right, this morning, very warm, very humid, couple of showers, even a few thunderstorms around the area. And then later on this afternoon, mid 80s, so we are going to be on the warm side, plenty of humidity. We'll see sort of a, a, a lull in the action, then a couple of more showers and storms this afternoon, a few more than late tonight. And yeah, any one of these can be on the strong, potentially severe side, because again, we do have a very volatile atmosphere out there right now. So yeah, it's just kind of a murky morning. You can see the road is damp over there by the airport and we're not seeing a whole heck of a lot of rain right now. Uh, what we have been kind of uh, focusing on this morning is this cell down here right around Yorktown. It was 
looking pretty pretty ominous there for a while. It has settled down. It continues to work its way off to the northeast and it's moving at roughly 35 miles per hour. That's the, the latest number on it. So let's just put a, a, a tracker right here going up and as you can see it is going to be hitting Quero right about 636. So in roughly the next uh, say 15 20 minutes that's going to be hitting there and then continuing off to the northeast. Now there is another cell that has started to uh, pop up in behind that and just looping this back through again these things are just all of a sudden it pops up like that. So that's what we're going to be on the lookout for and once they do start to blossom, if you will. There's not a whole lot that stops them, so that's why we have to be on the lookout. we got a few more showers that uh, have been working their way in through uh, right around Wilson County, heading into Guadalupe County, sliding up to the north, and even in eastern Bear County. Nothing is really blowing up as of yet, but like I said, some of these with the atmosphere like it is, this computer model, it, for instance, does have some of these continuing to develop throughout the course of the morning. Most of the real strong ones are going to be further up to the northeast. That that can be kind of the focus, if you will. It doesn't mean the rest of us aren't under the threat. As a matter of fact, we are under the threat for something to become severe. But again, the greatest threat is up there to the northeast. So midday, a little bit of a break in the action, and we'll still have some of those storms up there to the north. A couple more trying to get going then later on late this afternoon in toward dinner time. And then we're going to go into late tonight and there's going to be another line that tries to develop here. And again, some of those may be on the strong, potentially severe side. Here's the outlook again, further up to the northeast. This is a three on a scale of one to five. So pretty good chance that those are going to be strong. It's hail and high winds will be the biggest threats up there to the northeast. Even an isolated tornado cannot be totally ruled out. Not very likely. However, with the humidity in place again, that makes the atmosphere so unstable. But we do have another front moving through late tonight, so that's going to knock out the humidity for the rest of the week. Fantastic rest of the week, and then here comes the humidity moving back on in here just in time for the weekend, and I think once it comes back in for the weekend, it's going to be sticking around for a while. So 84 today, we get that front moving through tonight, some of those stronger storms tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, back to, you know, light jacket in the morning, beautiful in the afternoon. More clouds, more humidity, and uh, right now it looks like a few rain chances maybe the middle of next week. Um, still going to keep tabs on that because, of course, Fiesta starts a week from Thursday. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, already, and just, you know, kind of a long-range little hint at it. It's going to be typical Fiesta weather. It's oh. going to be hot and humid. It's Warm looking and like muggy. And off, maybe so. some potential rain. Uh, yeah, a couple of showers. That's, you know, a little iffy right now. Yeah. But I think a uh, better bet is the, the heat and humidity. So can't wait. You know, <laughs> if it's cool and you're eating chicken on a stick, it just doesn't have, have the same flavor. A little you more gotta, sweat. You got to be sweating. Yeah. <laughs> a little salty. All right. <laughs> 620, 73 degrees. Just ahead, Target, Walmart, and other big stores are offering huge deals before the summer. We'll look at why in your GMA First Look. If you're taking an antidepressant, but you're still masking your depression, you could be experiencing a partial response to your antidepressant. Partial response happens when your antidepressant alone isn't enough. Let's try adding Rexulti. When added to an antidepressant, Rexulti significantly reduced depression symptoms more than an antidepressant alone. So you can build on your progress. Rexulti can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have an increased risk of death or stroke. Antidepressants may increase suicidal thoughts and actions and worsen depression in children and young adults. Report new or sudden changes in mood, behavior, thoughts, or feelings. Or if you develop suicidal thoughts or actions, Report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death. Weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells, unusual urges, dizziness on standing, falls, seizures, trouble swallowing, or sleepiness may occur. Ask your doctor about Rex Salty. In this morning's GMA First Look, Battle of the Spring Sales. Major retailers pulling out all the stops. I can't believe it. Get to work at Target. Target showcasing familiar faces to ramp up excitement for their spring savings. During springtime, particularly as millions of Americans have either already received or about to receive their tax refund, there's more likely to be good deals on things like appliances, mattresses, electronics that you would buy specifically for yourself. With some experts saying this competition can put you, the consumer, on top. 
These big box retailers are also competing with one another. So don't get sucked into that marketing and advertising machine of one of these particular sales holidays. Be sure to look around online to make sure you're getting the best deal. And coming up at 7 a.m., the one technique that's crucial for figuring out if you found a real deal on spring savings. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. March Madness has wrapped up with the same result as last year. Number one seeded UConn dominated number one seed Purdue 75-60 to go back to back as national champs. That's the first time a college men's team has repitted since Florida in 06 and 07. UConn is now tied for third all time with six championships. In the NBA, Spurs have four games left to make it to 20 wins. They're at Memphis tonight at 7 o'clock, followed by a back-to-back -to -back tomorrow at OKC. Keldon Johnson is out tonight with a left foot sprain, and Chetty Osman has a right ankle sprain. And before we go to break, check it out. Yesterday during the 1.37 p.m. Uh, at 1.37 p.m. during the eclipse, Nike posted this video on X using the eclipse to tease what is likely Victor Wenmanyama's new logo. It's an alien inside a basketball along with two Nike swoosh logos. The video start off saying somewhere in South Texas. That is so cool. Universally positive feedback so far. Seriously, this is so whoever designed that kudos. Very cool. Very, very uh, cool. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan movie signs. One of my favorite movies of yeah. all time. I know it's random, but I love that movie. I gotcha. <laughs> It's 626 and 73 degrees. Let's take a look at Transguide. If you're headed out the door at uh, 630, you have just a matter of minutes. 90 at Nogalitos. Traffic is building, so it's 37. And there's I-35 at O'Connor. Outside with live cam this morning, Mike still wants us to be weather aware today as we take a look outside with uh, live cam over San Antonio International Airport. Waiting for that sun to come up after the big show yesterday when the clouds kind of <laughs> were a factor. They definitely were a factor, yeah. but it was still cool to be in the darkness. Oh, yeah. Very, very cool. Good morning. It's 630 on this Tuesday, April 9th. Happy to be here with you guys. Glad you're with us, too. Mike Ostrage, we, we're not going to talk behind your back. You're right here. <laughs> um, big uh, day in history today. This was the surrender at Appomattox that ended the Civil War. Civil back War. In 1865. Oh. Yes, indeed. I just I've read that. been there uh, as a kid, and it's it's basically just a, a country crossroad. There's not much there. And it was a small little church yeah. right there. Yeah. Where it's Grant still there, too, I believe. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, as you were talking about being uh, kind of on alert today, and that's the situation even this morning. Now, we've got a lot of mist out there. You can see sort of that, uh, that reflection off the road. It is damp, so allow yourself a little extra time. Obviously, the you can see the humidity out there. It is very high. Temperatures, we're averaging 15 degrees above normal across the board. Everybody is in the low 70s right now. And then you got that number. You get dew points in the low 70s. It feels like it's the middle of summer, basically, when you step outside. So we're already starting to see a few showers. And earlier this morning, the only thing really showing up was a cell well down here. That's sort of fizzle on out. But notice how there's another one right on the heels of that heading in toward Yorktown. And that little bit of purple right there, that's maybe either some heavy downpours or even some small hail. There was some small hail earlier this morning. A couple of more showers right here here in Guadalupe County and then Eastern Bear County kind of sliding up to the north and then notice how that cell just started popping up there right there in northeastern Frio County and it's growing fairly quickly so we're gonna have to watch out for these to grow and develop quickly like I said temperatures all around the area are in the 70s right now and with all the humidity the atmosphere is very volatile so it's not going to take much for these to continue to grow and then potentially reach severe levels with high winds as well as as hail being the biggest threats and most of the area, the vast majority of the area is under a three and a two on the scale of one to five as far as the, the risk for severe weather. Obviously the greatest threats up here to the northeast, but any of these can blossom and, and sort of blow up very quickly and become strong to severe. So that's what we're going to have to watch out for throughout the rest of the morning. So a few storms developing. Other than that, some mist, damp roads out there. Again, they may be strong. We'll see somewhat of a lull in the action and then a few more potentially late this afternoon, but then especially tonight, there's going to be another line that moves on through. It's going to be in the wee hours of the morning. That's going to be along the front that moves on through here, which is going to provide some gorgeous weather for the rest of the week. It's going to be windy tomorrow.
tomorrow and then just beautiful kind of jackety weather in the morning and then very nice in the afternoon. But then the humidity and the warmer air comes back in here for the weekend. Looks like it's going to be sticking around for a while into most all of next week. Going to take a closer look at at radar and see what the storm is going to be doing in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authority right now. What's going on, sir? All right, Mike. Yeah, we are seeing our first uh, major incident of the morning here. If you're about to step outside south of downtown I-35 at Division Avenue, you see a pretty good backup here because of a crash that's reported further up the northbound lanes of 35 there at uh, West Malone Avenue. So it's going to be affecting all of our folks there that are driving up West Malone. Theo Avenue, uh, Burbank High School is headed up here to, as we get to a little bit further north on 35 up to uh, US Highway 90. So take a look here at some of the backup that we're seeing right now. And you can't even see it on our map, but we are seeing some delays as far back as South Cross in this area. So Division Avenue up to uh, West Malone right there. We have a crash that has blocked at least uh, one of the uh, main lanes there, the right lane, and also the shoulder in that area of 35 northbound. Seeing a couple other things pop up in our area right now. We do have a stalled vehicle being reported 16 4 and 35 in the Von Army area and then downtown area we have a stall there in the Cesar Chavez there at 35 as well and uh, we had had a crash reported there in the Elmendorf area but that looks like that has been cleared out there in the 30 set on I-37 so biggest thing we're seeing right now this backup 35 at Malone got a pretty good backup all the way from uh, here to Division and to South Cross Boulevard so uh, just take caution if you're about to head out in the Burbank High School area Mark and Sarah back to you guys thank you RJ a judge is giving prosecutors more time to hand over video evidence in the case of a man accused of shooting at three San Antonio police officers. In August 2023, Jesse Garcia was out on bond when officers tried to arrest him for violating the terms. As police chased him, Garcia is accused of shooting at the officers. He faces several charges, including aggravated assault of a peace officer. Well, tough decisions are in the future for San Antonio ISD. That's according to its superintendent and board president. The district is in the middle of budget workshops for the 2024-2025 budget. SEISD said in a release last night that it's considering several options, including eliminating openings, freezing non-mission critical openings at its central office, restructuring district level staff, and possibly reducing workday calendars and programming. In that release, SAISD Board President Christina Martinez said in part, in Texas, where inflation has hit upwards of 22% and public education has not seen an increase in state funding in five years, the school district budgeting process is more arduous than usual at this time. The district is already closing 15 schools as part of its right sizing plan. SAISD says it will also review its programs and services over the next several months. The board is scheduled to approve its final budget for the 2024-2025 year in June. The Texas Hill Country had quite a few clouds yesterday, but also had some of the longest times in totality for the solar eclipse. Many people with many people we spoke with traveled from out of state to check it out, and thousands of people were not let down. KSAT had crews all over the area from Leon Springs to Kerrville and Fredericksburg. Here are some special moments from our eclipse coverage. Benjamin, what did you think about what just happened? I was like, uh, what is happening? I cried. It was really dark and unlike anything that you'd find in Los Angeles where I live. And this camera broke right before. I couldn't figure out how to work this camera, so I didn't get a photo on this thing. Well, I think there are probably plenty of photos out there, but you came all the way from L.A. Yes. for this? Oh, wow. Yes. Was it worth it? Yes, totally. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Awesome. Oh my gosh. This is the coolest event ever. Oh, I think it might be coming back. The clouds are covering mostly the time, but um, then at the end, uh, the clouds kind of opened up and we got to see the eclipse. I've never seen one in my home in my life, and by I me, mean, I've seen a partial eclipse, but my my first real, like full eclipse. It was so cool. I don't think Adam Kasky was excited, guys. Mm -mm. Not in the least bit. Nope. <laughs> if you're wondering what to do with your eclipse glasses, you can donate them 
As long as they're not damaged, you have until April 30th to drop them off at Warby Parker. It's a store that sells glasses in La Cantera. From there, you'll go to the they they will go to the group Astronomers Without Borders. They'll send them to students in underprivileged countries. We have more information on how you can do that. Just head to ksat.com. If you are already missing the solar eclipse experience, there are more chances to see the sun disappear. You just have to travel a little further. Full solar eclipses happen about every year or two or three. The next total solar eclipse will be in 2026 and will pass over the northern fringes of Greenland, Greenland Iceland, and Spain. However, an eclipse on the scale of yesterday's event won't happen again until August of 2045, and the U.S. will get a taste of totality before then in 2044. Now that the eclipse is over, oh my gosh, we're just right into fiesta season. Fiesta 2024, Mark. We are two weeks or less than two weeks away from San Antonio's biggest party with a purpose. Here's a look at our countdown clock. We move from the eclipse to yeah. fiesta. <laughs> nine days, nine hours, 21 minutes. We love countdown clocks here at KSAT. This year's Fiesta Fiesta event is at the Alamo Dome on April 18th, my birthday. I'll be out there celebrating Fiesta Fiesta. And if you like to ride in a Fiesta parade, Get your phone handy and scan this QR code on your screen. Tell us what you love about the Battle of Flowers Parade to enter for a chance to ride on a float and show us your shoes. The Battle of Flowers Parade is Friday, April 26th. Are you Grand Marshal of your own birthday parade? Yes. Okay, good. There's good only a couple of us, you know, in my parade, but... <laughs> That's it's, it's, it's OK. We got to put shoe boxes to use. <laughs> uh, all right. So once you enter the contest or register to become a KSAT insider, you can access our KSAT Fiesta parties. So scan this code from there. You can buy tickets for our insider Fiesta parties at the day and night parade. You can find all this information right now at KSAT.com. I cannot believe it's like I, I think like we were just so eclipse focused. It's like. As soon like as the that. lights turn back on, it's like fiesta. Fiesta, yep, moving on. All right, it's 640 and 73 degrees. Just ahead on GMSA, San Pedro Playhouse putting a Texas twist on a popular Shakespeare production. We've got a preview before opening night tonight. Welcome back and good morning. 643 in your morning spotlight, San Pedro Playhouse putting on a Shakespeare in the park. Its newest production, Midsummer Swinyol, is an original San Antonio themed adaption of Shakespeare's A Mid Midsummer Night's Dream. Case at digital journalist and producer Andrew Wilson brings us a preview from San Pedro Springs Park. <laughs> is Midsummer Sueño, an adaptation of Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream. What we're hoping to give the audience is a Shakespeare in the park with a little Southwest San Antonio style. We'll be at San Pedro Springs Park, which is right next door. It's beautiful. There's trees literally built into the set. It's gorgeous. The language has a combination of Shakespeare's verse and prose, but it also has a little Spanglish, a little Spanish mixed in, and a little contemporary English. So it should be a little less intimidating, a little easier to follow uh, story-wise. To me, it's really relatable, especially if you've, you know, you're from San Antonio, uh, you've never seen a Shakespeare. I think this is a really accessible and fun version of the show. What's gonna be exciting is there's gonna be food trucks and vendors, um, and then you can bring your own chair and you can enjoy it uh, in the outdoor space. I really enjoy the fairies and the dancing and all the culture that's built into their costumes and their language, their movement. There's so many different elements and techniques that are going into that, especially the Flocorico dancers. They are probably my favorite part of the show. <laughs> and They don't have any dialogue, but they, their foot movement is so beautiful and the technique is so specific that it's unlike anything I've seen anywhere else and it's just so special to have that tied into our story as well. It's a wonderful opportunity for um, the people of San Antonio to see how Shakespeare and our culture can intertwine. That was KSAT's Andrew Wilson reporting and we need to get Andrew to do stand-ups for these stories. Come on, Andrew. He's, he's fun to watch. I know you can do it. Yeah, the six <laughs> shows will be performed uh, in a set built into San Pedro Springs Park right behind the Classic Theater. And you 
won't have to you won't have long to see it before performances run from now until this Sunday, April 14th. Break a leg, everybody. All right, time to raise the curtain on a big traffic trouble spot at 35 and division. Yes, guys, and uh, you mentioned Andrew. Yeah, big lover of the theater and arts. So yeah, let's see Andrew on the camera a little bit more. But all right, guys, big incidents here south of downtown 35 at division. We see some major backup here. Traffic is basically stop and go at this point right now. Uh, there was a crash further up the road here, 35 northbound there at uh, the Theo Avenue and Malone Avenue area. Initially, it was reported as a couple of crashes, so we do have the right-handed lane blocked in this area, and traffic is slowly getting through this area right here. Let's show you our maps and see what we're looking at in terms of the backup here. We are already seeing backup all the way to a Southwest Military, so we it was this is the South Cross area, so we have some delays all the way now to the Southwest Military area. It's going to take you about, looking at about 20 minutes just to travel about two miles up 35 here as we get towards uh, not only this accident, but also another stalled vehicle being reported there at uh, 90 and 10 at the 35 interchange. That's where all these kind of highways intersect in the Burbank area. So if you're headed out to that part, uh, not great news for all of our folks uh, headed up to Burbank and the Bulldogs area. All right, stalled vehicles, a lot of them along 35. This is basically the center of our activity right here. 35 at Cesar Chavez northbound. There's our other stalled vehicle there at uh, 90 and 10. And then we also have a stalled vehicle in the Von Army area at 35 and 1604. But we will continue to uh, see some heavy delays here due to this accident. Again, it was initially reported as a couple of accidents in this area. So let's keep this in mind. It looks like uh, we got our folks uh, in and about and people are up now and making their way around town, guys. Thank you, RJ. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Hopefully, with Midsummer Night's Dream, they can kind of, it's looking like there's going to be a window that they can get that performance in tonight. The next few days are going to be absolutely fantastic for it, but we've got some rain out there this morning and a couple of this afternoon, then again later on tonight. So, but that's very neat that they're, they're doing that and doing that outdoors like that. So, and San Pedro Playhouse is just such a great place to see a, a performance. Anyway, looking off to the east, obviously we're not going to have any sort of a, a great sunrise this morning with all these clouds. And notice how there is a bit of a reflection off the road. We've had a lot of mist, saw some just kind of dampish roads coming into uh, work this morning. And I want to point out a couple of different things that are going on. First of all, we've been watching this cell or actually the second cell that developed heading right in toward Quero. It's got some pretty good downpours with it, but no lightning is being detected. Then we've got these few showers here on the east side heading up in towards Seguin going right across I-10. Nothing to really write home about with this obviously getting some rain now off to the west of town and it is this cell uh, which is continuing to develop again this kind of popped half an hour 45 minutes ago there was really nothing there and as you can see this thing is just really popped up and it is moving at a fairly decent clip all of these have been going at 35 we'll put 35 miles per hour on it that's been the average speed with a lot of these cells so at that rate as this continues up to the northeast and again right about uh, 35 miles per hour so we are looking at it moving in toward McCullum High School right around 721 Palo Alto College about quarter after Seven, so we're looking at the next half hour to uh, 45 minutes. Burbank about 727. So again, this continues to work its way up to the northeast. Now, as far as anything really strong with this, no, obviously no lightning is being detected as of yet, but it continue. It will continue to build up and that will be the situation with a lot of these cells. They are going to continue to grow and we'll see more of them over the course of the morning, even though there's not a lot out there as of right now. This computer model has the majority of this rain well off to the northeast. That's where the greatest threat is going to be. But again, anything else around the area can develop into a strong to potentially severe storm. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with these throughout the rest of today. So this is going to be the situation through this morning. We'll have a few more of them out there. Then once we get into this afternoon, a little bit more of a lull in the action and even going into tonight, you know, one or two of these uh, cells out here. Then we go into the evening hours and again, a few of those showers and thunderstorms out there. We see another line that's going to be developing then as we go on into the late night hours and the wee hours of tomorrow morning. Then that's going to be along the front. That will signal the end to all of this and we'll have a beautiful weather, like I said, for the rest of the week. But we're going to have to watch out for some of those storms this morning, one or two this afternoon, and then especially later on tonight. 84 for a high temperature today. Still definitely on the, uh, the humid side. 
Then we uh, go into the next few days. Absolutely fantastic. Windy tomorrow, though, and once we get into the weekend, the humidity is definitely going to be coming back into the picture with more clouds around here. And looking at some of the long range models, humidity is going to be sticking around through next week with some pretty warm temperatures. Just in time for Fiesta. Just in time for Fiesta and somebody's birthday, too. So I bring the heat. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> time now, 651, 73 degrees. Let's see if the sun is starting to pick up. Nope, not yet. Those clouds still hanging around. Hey, when we come back, we have one more check with RJ for traffic and weather. Before you go, Toyota Fields hosting the Mexican women's national team for an international friendly tonight versus Australia. It's part of the 2024 Mex Tour W, showcasing women's soccer for future generations of athletes. Match kicks off tonight at 7 p.m. and puts Toyota Field in the international spotlight for the second time this year. San Antonio hosted a match between the U.S. men's national team and Slovenia back in January. We're going to check in with RJ for one more check in with traffic. Yeah, guys. All right. So uh, we are seeing a lot of traffic south of downtown as we take a look here. 35 at Division Avenue. So we have confirmed that there were actually two accidents in this area, both northbound 35 there, one here at Division and the one up further up the road at Malone. So as we take a look at the backup here all the way now to Southwest Military. So we got a pretty significant backup here for all of our folks headed out to the Burbank High School area. Just take caution if you're headed up 35 north up to 90, 10 and the downtown area. Stalled vehicle be reported 90 eastbound at uh, loop 1604 backing up traffic all the way to highway 211 for all of our folks coming in from castroville mike all right so all right. a lot got of a, activity out there yeah got a couple of cells that have been developing we've got those showers on the northeast side up there crossing over 10 around seguin down around uh, yorktown Quero, and then that next cell down there which is just working its way now into the uh, southwest side of san antonio bear county right there by 35 uh, 1604 on the uh, southwest side that's going to continue to work its way up to the northeast so just uh, again take your umbrella this morning 73 right now every Everybody is very, very warm and humid. We do have the threat for severe weather today, not only this morning, but then later on as well. We'll be on the lookout for that with high winds and hail 87 for a high temperature today. So it's going to be warm and humid and then the next few days are fantastic. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for watching. GMA, GMA is next.